ओम शांति 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 गजानन भूतगणाधिसेत कपितजंबोफलसारभक्षित पुमासुत शोक विनाशकारण नमा विघ्नेशर पादपंकज सरस्वती नमस्तुभ्यं वरदे कामिणी विद्यारंभम क्या सिद्धिर्भव मे सदा गुरुर्ब्रह गुरुर्ष्णु गुरुर्देव महेशर गुरुर्साक्षात्म ब्रह्म तस्म श्रीगुरव नम ओं ब्रह्मानंद परम सुखद केवल ज्ञानमूर्ति द्वंद्वातीत गगन सदृश तत्व सेलक्ष्यम एक विमलमचल सर्वधी साक्षीभूत भावातीतगुणरहित सद्गु तम नमा ओं त्र्यंबक यजाहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता आत ओं त्र्यंबक यजाहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता आत ओं त्र्यंबक यजाहे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकम बंधना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृता आत सदा स्मेरवक्म कृपा पूर्ण नेत्र स्थि दीन मित्र जन प्रीतिपात्र सुविज्ञात शास्त्र कषायाक्तवस्त्र दयानंद मदाचार्यमे परब्रह्म निष्ठ स्वतो धर्म निष्ठ अहिंसैकनिष्ठ स्विष्य सुजुष्ट यतीना वरिष्ठ गुरूण गरिष्ठ दयानंद मदाचार्य सुशास्त्रे चरत सदा सचर जनान् बोधय भवादुद्धर मटा स्थापय गुरुन पूजय दयानंद मदाचार्य कला प्रचार दधान विनम्रम स्वयं ग्रंथकार सता नमत्तापहारम स्वयं निर्विकार दयानंद मदाचार्य सदा शातमूर्ति सदा शातिमूर्ति सदा दातिमूर्ति सदा सत्यमूर्ति प्रमाण प्रवृत्ति दिशत सुकर्ति दयानंद मदाचार्य इदम पंचक यपटे शुद्ध चित्त सदा मोक्ष मगे नितांतं नितांत प्रवृत्त प्रसाद सुर्भव ज्ञानयुक्त स जीवन मृतो वा भवे नित्यमुक्त दयानंद मदाचार्य दयानंद मदाचार्य दयानंद मदाचार्य दयानंद मदाचार्य दयानंद मदाचार्य वि हैव द ध्यान श्लोक इन भगवद गीता इट गोस एज पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता आई जस्ट चैंड दैट एंड यम ब्रह्मा वरुणेन्द्र रुद्र ओम पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिताम पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायिनी अंबत्वामुसंदी भगवदगीते भगवेशिनी यम ब्रह्म वरुणेन्द्र रुद्रमुता स्तुन्वती दिव्यस्तव वेद सांगपद्रमोपनिषद गायती यम सामगावस्थित तत्कते न मनसा पश्यती यम योगिनो युसुरा सुरगणा देवाय तस्म नम
the 13th chapter we talked about uh, prakriti purusha kshetra kshetrajna jnanam nyayam in fact i see it as a complete chapter in excel it covers all aspects of spirituality jnayam is that which is to be known so that is para brahma he is also known as a kshetrajna the knower of the body and all the things around in this world which are objects of consciousness everything that is objects of consciousness that comes under kshetram a field of experience the one who knows this is the kshetrajna this kshetrajna is also the jnayam jnayam means that which is to be known so for ultimate fulfillment this conscious being which is limitless which is present in your body at the same time it is a knower of your body but not limited to the body it is at once local and also universal it is everywhere and it is here and now so this is the nature of uh, kshetrajna and uh, that kshetrajna is none other than yourself your conscious nature is kshetrajna <clears throat> knowing this you gain ultimate liberation to help you to know this are various qualities which are talked about in 13th chapter ajnanam it starts with amanitvam adambitvam we saw all this in the last class so various spiritual attitudes values and practices that help you to become spiritually mature and connect to this knowledge and own it up uh the question is asked what is the difference between uh, manana and nitidhyasana basically these are to help you to accept the teaching to accept the fact that is revealed by the shastra you cannot accept a fact if you have certain objections to it if your belief system do not allow you to accept the fact then you will find some reason to deny what is being revealed as a fact for simple reason there is a story of uh the minister who was supposed to be uh dead the king had ordered his ex- execution and after a year of this uh, execution the king decided let me go and uh, go for a hunt he was regretting his decision to execute the minister so for one year he stayed indoors and after a year he says enough of sorrowing let me go out for a hunt he went to the forest and in the forest he saw this minister he cannot believe his eyes how can the minister be alive and suddenly a thought came to his head this is not the live minister this is the ghost of the dead minister okay so instead of seeing the live minister he saw the ghost of the minister his eyes are seeing the minister but his mind is not accepting that fact so this is where you have to be told that the minister is not really dead he was taken for execution but on the way he escaped and this ex- executioner so he didn't want to reveal what had happened so he wanted to cover up and he told the king the minister is dead okay so the king was given a false information based on that false information the king concludes that this minister is a ghost 
so when all the things unraveled and the king came to understand what had really happened then he was able to accept the minister as he is so this is a process of uh, challenging your belief so your belief goes against what is revealed so you have to challenge your own belief so with the help of the shastra you question your own belief until there is no more objection to what the shastra says so this is called mananam mananam means you logically verify whatever is revealed in the shastra the revelation in the shastra is called shravanam shravanam is the proper teaching okay you verify it with mananam and having verified it still your uh, subconscious mind is not uh, fully uh, satisfied with the answers so you always feel no 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 i executed the minister so how can he be alive okay so in your unguarded moments your subconscious mind says no the minister is dead your conscious mind is saying minister is alive your subconscious mind is saying minister is dead so this is where you keep repeating you keep repeating the truth that you have seen with your conscious mind you keep it repeating until it connects to your subconscious mind so this is called nitidhyasana so in nitidhyasana what you already know you are making it more and more evident to your subconscious mind okay this is called highlighting you keep highlighting the fact until it becomes so uh, uh so highlighted that you cannot miss it when it is not highlighted so there is a possibility that you can forget it or you can miss it because other things are also there when it is highlighted to a great extent then no matter what you are reading you cannot miss that highlight this is niti dhyasana so through shravana manana niti dhyasana you come to your own real nature you are what you are you are complete you are secure now the 14 chapter the 14 chapter krishna keeps on emphasizing the importance of this knowledge this knowledge is uttamam the knowledge that i have given you is uttamam and through this knowledge people have gained absolute fulfillment i am going to teach you this knowledge again arjuna because you are dear to me this knowledge is something that can transform you from a wanting person to a fulfilled person there is no other knowledge that can fully transform you in this way this is the only knowledge that can really fulfill you through this knowledge people have come to gain identity with myself and they are no longer born again in this world of change they don't have to go through the lifetimes or many lifetimes of birth and death in every lifetime there is suffering involved so they don't have to get caught up in that suffering they become liberated once and for all <clears throat> so krishna again uh, talks about this knowledge i'll share the screen for you yeah
Krishna talks about this knowledge. Verse number three says, Mama Yonir Mahat Brahma Tasmin Garbham Tatam Yaham. My Yoni. Yoni is the womb. So Krishna says, Mahat Brahma. So there is my creation, which is called as Mahat. This Mahat is the uh, you can say Karanam. So it is a Karanam through which I become the creator. So through my Mahat Brahma, the Karanam, I become the creator. In this Mahat Brahma, Tasmin Garbham Dadam Yaham. I sow the seed of creation. So in this womb, which is called as Mahat Brahma, it's also known as Prakriti. Prakriti and Purusha. These are the two factors. <coughs> the two factors responsible for creation. Purusha is a conscious being who is changeless. Prakriti is a changing uh, entity that goes through the cycle of manifestation and disappearance. Okay, Prakriti appears and disappears. It's like a shadow. The shadow comes and the shadow goes. Now, this Prakriti so is a Karanam for the entire creation. You can think of creation as a shadow play. All of creation is like a shadow play. The original shadow is Mahat Brahma or Prakriti. That original shadow undergoes modification and it becomes a different, uh, different uh, kinds of individual shadows so this is called the shadow play so from the original shadow you have multiple shadows manifesting and all those multiple shadows they disappear also back into the original so this is whole thing is a shadow play and uh, in the process you see that creation is nothing but an appearance. There is no material uh, creation. There is only an appearance called creation. Mama Yonir Mahat Brahma Tasmin Garbam Tadam Yaham. So, to activate this shadow play, Krishna says, I, as the creator, I plant the seed of creation in this prakriti. Sambhava Sarva Bhutanam Tato Bhavati Bharata. So, through this seed, the entire universe is sprouted. Now, this uh, Mahat Brahma is said to be the Karanam, the Yoni. Now, there are many beings, each of them are said to be part of different yonis. So you have Manushya Yoni, you have the Deva Yoni, you have the Asura Yoni, you have the Tiriyak Yoni, the animals, you have the Udbija Yoni, the plants. So different kinds of yonis. So for all those yonis, the Mahat Brahma is the ultimate yoni. Mahat Brahma is the ultimate Karana. And that Karanam is basically Prakriti. So, in Prakriti, Ishwara plants a seed of consciousness through which the creation emerges as a shadow play. Right? Verse number 5, it talks about Prakriti having three gunas. Three gunas means three constituents. Three constituents 
which have different nature sattvam rajas tamaiti gunaha prakriti sambhavaha these are the different qualities that originate from prakriti sattva is uh, that which is conscious rajas is that which has activity tamas is that which has uh, you can say inertia so tamas is inertia rajas is energy activity sattvam is intelligence knowledge they are all born from prakriti when you talk about creation all of creation is a permutation combination of these three when you talk about the physical body the physical body is born of tamas when you talk about your prana your breath your breath is said to be born from rajas when you talk about your mind your thoughtfulness that is born from sattva okay everything in creation is born from these three sattva rajas tamas these three are the constituents of prakriti so when prakriti is expanding in fact this navaratri is ideal uh, picture of the creation you find in south india you have the dolls lined up right from top to bottom there are nine layers or an odd number of layers in each layer there are different dolls kept starting from mundane activities okay you find the activities of uh, daily living so also the things that you use in the kitchen so all those are arranged you find uh, dancers musicians you find traders you find uh, hawkers all those things are are represented by dolls and then you have uh, even uh, marriage uh, this thing you know the couple that also is made of dolls then you have the devatas the devatas are divine beings you have musicians you have dance artisans art and music everything is arranged and it goes right up to the devatas and the trimurtis the brahma vishnu maheshwara and also right on the top you will find devi this is the whole representation of creation before navaratri all these dolls are inside a box okay so in the first day of navaratri all of them they come out this is called creation so they are all arranged in uh, so many layers this is called the 14 lokas the 14 lokas are created and in this life is happening all things that we are familiar with about life everything is happening in this 14 lokas you find animals trees human beings devatas all life forms are present the story goes that there is a fight between the devi and mahishasura on the 10th day mahishasura was killed and all is well all is well she blesses you after that she withdraws her creation when she withdraws her creation all the dolls go back into the box nay right? so the whole of creation is manifestation and disappearance nothing new is created everything is in the box nothing is new is created only thing it is presented this is creation and at the end of the 10 days all things go back this is called a roll backing a rolling back creation 
if you think of creation like a mat you can roll it out and then you can roll it back okay and the same thing is a process of the universal creation prakriti rolls out creation and rolls back creation in the process there is srishti sthiti laya creation sustenance and destruction <clears throat> all this happens through the constituents of prakriti sattva rajas tamas so sattva represents a uh, conscious thoughtfulness willfulness and uh, knowledge rajas represents activity tamas represents inert things so when you look at the five elements the five elements akasha is very subtle earth is very physical okay now this five elements they are material they are physical material physical material is born of tamas when you talk about the energies that are behind this material so there is a an intermediate state when this physical materials did not exist they existed in a very subtle form just like a tree exists in the sprout in the sprout you don't see the entire tree but it is present the sprout has got shoots it has got roots it's very fine very subtle very tiny so the creation this physical elements so before they became physical they were subtle they were sukshma so that sukshma is accounted for by rajas and sattva okay rajas account for the energies represented in the five elements the sattva represents the conscious element again present in the five elements so in the sattva five elements and rajas five elements there is the presence of awareness energy consciousness in the physical five elements there is only tamas right sattvam rajas tamaiti gunaha prakriti sambhavaha now this is creation what about you are you creation or are you different from creation krishna says your body is made of sattva your prana is made of rajas your mind is made of sattva right so where are you are you sattva rajas or tamas krishna says you are neither you are neither sattva nor rajas nor tamas you are atitah you are chaturtah you are beyond all this you are the witness of all this you are conscious as a conscious being you are not part of prakriti you are purushah purusha is the one who is was there before creation as a bija pradah as a one who gives the seed of creation so the seed of creation is nothing but your conscious nature your conscious nature impregnates prakriti and then there is a creation that creation includes your body your mind are you created you are not created you are present before creation okay but you are present in this body mind and in the mind there is ignorance that ignorance makes you believe that you are part of body mind this body and mind are you so this is called a mistake so there is a mistake born of ignorance which ties you down to body mind so from the limitless nature that you are you have come down this called the great fall the great fall you have descended not from monkeys 
okay you are descended from the divinity and you have got caught up in the layers of material you have got caught up in this layers of material you believe this material is you you believe this body mind is you so this is the great mistake so the fall is not a physical fall the fall is a cognitive fall cognitive fall means what you are and how you see yourself there is a great gap what you are is absolute how you see yourself is subject to change you are conditional being okay so this is the fall that great gap is there that gap krishna says it is nothing but ignorance in ignorance there is a gap in knowledge you find there is no gap you recognize this is material you are spiritual you are absolute this is material this is prakriti this is purusha who are you i am purusha appearing present in prakriti i am not tied down by prakriti i only appear along with prakriti prakriti cannot tie me down i am absolute prakriti is relative prakriti is changing i am changeless so when you have this knowledge of purusha and prakriti completely you find all your changes that happen to you all the differences that you see around you good bad ugly all this is part of prakriti happiness sorrow all is part of prakriti what about you you are stand alone you are untouched you are absolutely free okay so this is called as moksha moksha means liberation from bondage what is bondage ignorance is bondage in ignorance you are tied down to prakriti in knowledge you are released from prakriti okay now as i said this prakriti has got these three elements sattva rajas samas sattva accounts for knowledge rajas accounts for uh, energy activity tamas accounts for inertia inertia means no activity dullness okay ah uh, verse number 6 it tells you tatra sattvam nirmalatva prakashakam anamayam the sattva aspect of prakriti accounts for your mind so if your mind is clear so it is nirmalam and it is enlightening your mind throws light on facts about the world the mind and the sense organs they are lighting up the world so this prakashakam and anamayam it is free from uh it is it is free from uh you can say dullness and uh, disease okay and it accounts for joy your mind is capable of great joy so if you function with a clear mind you are capable of enjoying joy krishna says even that joy is a bondage even that joy is a bondage sukha sangena badnati jnana sangena cha anagha sattva gives you sukha sattva gives you jnanam it gives you knowledge of things around okay now even that sukha and jnanam is said to be a bondage why is it so because you miss yourself as you are you see yourself as the mind okay even when you enjoy sukha you tell yourself i am sukhi when you enjoy knowledge of the world you say i am a jnani i am a phd when you say i am a phd i am sukhi 
opposite also is true so sometime dukkha also comes i am a dukhi okay and i realize all my knowledge is not enough there are areas of ignorance i am also a ajnani that means i am subject to change i am subject to change and i miss myself i am beyond sattva rajas tamas i am beyond change i am untouched by limitations of creation if i mistake myself to be the mind what happens i take myself as sukhi i take myself as jnani in the process this is like a golden prison a golden bars in the prison if you are locked up in a golden cage okay can you say wonderful it's a golden cage it looks golden it looks wonderful but then you can't come out you are locked up if you are locked up golden cage and iron cage there is no difference okay if your freedom is lost a golden cage is not freedom golden cage is just another type of bondage i think in one of the middle east countries one of the princes the royal blood that person committed some uh, mistake and he was ordered to be beheaded he was ordered to be beheaded and he was beheaded with a golden sword okay it's a great privilege everybody cannot have that privilege only if you are a born prince can you be beheaded with a golden sword okay so now that is no real privilege so it is a bondage only so sattva also is a bondage even though you say i am a learned person i am a wealthy person i am a happy person you still miss your real self your real self is the one who is beyond sorrow you may say you are a happy person but you are never really beyond sorrow because sorrow is always waiting out of outside okay you you can lock yourself in a fort and keep sorrow outside but sorrow that fellow is always waiting outside the shastra says you can go to heaven where there is no death in heaven true there is no death in heaven but death is waiting outside heaven for you when you come out it will catch you okay so even if you go to heaven you are never really free from death free from sorrow the only freedom is when you recognize i am untouched by sorrow sorrow is prakriti i am purusha okay so sukha also binds you to knowledge to joy rajas binds you to desires tamas binds you to uh to ignorance and uh, error so in tamas you keep com- committing error after error in rajas you keep on pursuing your desires and it becomes an obsession in sukha you pursue knowledge you pursue happiness and that becomes endless pursuit so in all this you are only trying to fulfill yourself you are never really fulfilled until you realize i am not dependent on sattva rajas samas i am already independent i am free i don't have to fulfill myself i am by nature full and complete so this knowledge makes you free from all limitation okay. it is said sattvam sukhe sanjayati was nine sattva gives you joy rajas uh, takes you uh, to doing uh, more and more karma to fulfill yourself and tamas ends up in constantly 
you do what is not good for you it is pramada pramada is error now this sattva rajas tamas i told you the mind is made of sattva right but the qualities of the mind also keep changing so this changing qualities of the mind are also labeled as sattva rajas and tamas so when your mind is composed it is in harmony and it is uh, functioning appropriate to the situation there is sattva predominant when the mind is feverishly active there is the rajas element active and when the mind is dull there is a tamas element which is active okay so the mind also it goes through different phases of sattva rajas tamas so sometimes the rajas overcomes the mind and sattva goes down sometimes tamas overcomes the mind and rajas and sattva go down sometimes sattva okay you invoke sattva and make your mind perceptive make your mind alert you bring down rajas and tamas so this is how the mind keeps on moving up and down what is the characteristic how do you recognize when your mind is in sattva verse number 11 says sarvadwareshu deheshmin prakasha upajayate when all the windows of your sense organs they are all functioning optimally when there is there all are uh, throwing light in full measure you are gaining knowledge and your mind is active understand that state of mind is said to be sattva when there is greed and when there is a desire overpowering you and when you keep on obsessively doing activity understand rajas has overpowered your mind and when the mind is totally dull it is inactive and whatever you do you end up doing something error and you go into a delusion you believe something which is not really there you commit error after error so such type of mind is uh in tamas krishna says when you are predominantly in the sattva mode of mind at the time of death you go to higher worlds when the mind is predominantly rajas or tamas you go into lower worlds right okay verse number 17 says sattva sanjayate jnanam through sattva you gain knowledge through rajas you are connected to greed and through tamas you commit error pramada and moha moha is delusion so delusion is you see things different from what they are and there is also ignorance so these are all the products of tamas urdhvam gachanti sattvastaha those who are predominantly sattvic they move towards the higher worlds madhye tishtanti rajasaha and the tamasa they go into the lowest of low worlds lowest of low yonis so the yonis you have manushya yoni you have the tiryak yoni animals you have the plants udbija yoni okay and you also have the asura and rakshasa yoni so they are the lower and lower types of uh, beings so with tamas you go lower with sattva you keep on rising higher so these are the yonis and uh, you also have different kinds of lokas so the shastra talks about seven lokas upwards seven lokas downwards so higher you go you have a uh, world uh, which is more and more uh, happier more and more joyful more and more uh, freedom 
is enjoyed. As you go lower down in the scale of creation, you find your freedom becomes more and more restricted and there is greater amount of dukkha. <clears throat> now Krishna says that uh, it is because your ignorance in which you take yourself as tied down to sattva rajas samas. Okay? When you are tied down to sattva, it is like you are imprisoned in a golden cage. When you are tied down to tamas, you are imprisoned in an iron cage. So both are cages. In both, you lose your absolute freedom. You have to understand, I am not the one who is connected to this sattva rajas tamas. Sattva rajas tamas, they are different from me. Okay? And when I associate myself with Sattva Rajas Tamas, I think I am the doer. I think I am Sattvic Rajasik Tamasik. I think I am doing good deeds. I think I am doing wrong deeds. So really speaking, Nanyam Gunebhya Kartaram Yada Drashta Anupashasi. Other than the three Gunas, there is no doer. I am not the doer. I am not the agent of any activity, I am free from all activity. All activity is a play of these three gunas. Okay? When I mistakenly associate myself with the three gunas, I am taking the burden of the gunas on myself. I become sattvic, rajasic, tamasic. I am struggling with uh, uh, limitation, I am struggling against limitation. I am struggling to become free. In fact, I am always free and in ignorance, I have made myself bound. So, yada drashta anupashyati, when you recognize the difference, I am purusha, this is prakriti. Gunebhyasya param vetti. The one who knows that which is beyond the three gunas. So, your real nature is beyond the three gunas. Your nature as a karta is part of these three gunas. It is these three gunas that make you appear as karta. Then you recognize this and you see yourself as beyond the three gunas. You become free. Madhavam saha adigachati. Such a person of knowledge becomes one with Ishwara. Krishna says, such a person becomes one with me. He attains my nature. Okay, The one who knows the self as absolute reality becomes one with the Lord because the Lord and the devotee are not two different things. All difference is because of Sattva Rajas Tamas. Beyond Sattva Rajas Tamas, there is only oneness. That oneness is what Ishwara is. That oneness is what I am. So there is no real difference between Ishwara and myself. This is the message of the Upanishad, Tat Tvam Asi. That Ishwara is nothing but yourself. All differences, that and this, is because of Prakriti. When you look beyond this difference, there is only oneness. There is no separate Ishwara. There is no separate Jiva. There is no separate Jagat. What about Prakriti? There is no separate Prakriti also. Prakriti is just a shadow play. Prakriti is just a shadow. A shadow does not have independent existence. Your shadow is not you. At the same time, your shadow is not different from you. Can you get this? Your shadow is not you. Your shadow is not different from you. Same way, Prakriti is not you, but Prakriti is not different from you. Prakriti is that which is constantly changing. Therefore, it has no independent existence. This constant change 
depends on the changeless. So Purusha is a changeless. Prakriti is constant change. Right? So this does not have independent existence. It is just a shadow. So it is reality appearing differently. What is creation? Reality appearing differently. Who are you? You are reality appearing differently. When you know the difference, you are real. How you appear is just a shadow. When you recognize this fact, you are free from Prakriti, you are free from Sattva Rajasamas, you are free from joy and sorrow, birth and death, loss and gain, mana, apamana, honor and dishonor, all these differences are resolved once and for all. You are beyond all this. None of this can touch you. Okay. So, uh, Arjuna asks a question. Kair Lingai, Trin Gunan, Etan, 21. How do you recognize this uh, person who has gone beyond the three gunas, who is free from the three gunas? How is his activity? And how does he function in life? Krishna answers. The person who is beyond the three gunas, he continues to live in his body and mind. The body and mind can have changes. So from sattva to rajas to tamas. Body also can change from uh, uh, sickness to good health and back, right? So all changes can happen. But for the person who is beyond the three gunas, he recognizes these changes are part of prakriti. They don't touch me at all. I am beyond change. Therefore, such a person does not react to situations. The person only accepts the situations as they come and does whatever is appropriate and let them be. Let whatever is there outside, let it be outside. Don't carry it into your heart and make it a burden. Okay? So if you are sick, your sickness is part of your body, sometimes part of your mind also. Learn to accept, yes, the body will be sick. Mind can get disturbed. So do whatever you can to heal that disturbance. And then let it be. Do not hold on to that pain. Do not hold on to that sickness and say, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick. Okay? The more you hold on to that thought, I am sick, I am sick, I am sick, you are aggravating the sickness. The more you say, sickness is just an event in time. Sickness will come, it will go. Sorrow will come, it will go. It is part of change. I am changeless. Therefore, change cannot touch me. It cannot hurt me. It cannot destroy me. I am indestructible. So this is the sign of the wise person. He is beyond honor and dishonor. He is beyond the need for friendships and enmity. He is beyond the need for karma. Such a person is said to be gunatitaha. Verse 25. Mana avamana yos tulyaha. Tulyaha mitra aripaksha yoho. Sarvarambha parityagi gunatita sa uchyate. Okay. We come to the 15th chapter. The 15th chapter is a very beautiful chapter, only 20 verses. It starts by describing creation as a tree. And this tree is an inverted tree. The cause is up and the effect is down. The roots are above and the branches are below. The tree of creation, it goes back to the roots. The roots are above 
that is a karanam so the karanam is ishwara ishwara is said to be above and the karyam is said to be this creation all the branches of the trees are below okay this is the tree of life urdhva moolam adhashakam ashwatham this is the ashwatha tree the not really banyan tree but uh, it is people tree the people tree okay people and banyan also have something in common they have hanging roots right chandamsi asya parnani the leaves are the vedas and the shak the urdhva moolam the roots are the purusha and prakriti and the branches are sattva rajas tamas part of creation so this is said to be ashwatham ashwatham means uh, the tree ashwatha and also when you break down the word into the etymological meaning it is na shwaha tishtati okay na shwaha tishtati shwaha is tomorrow it does not exist for tomorrow it exists only for today so this ashwatha tree is constantly changing it is never the same from day to day it's constantly growing or depleting this is how creation is it is called samsara sam samyak sarati constantly moving constantly changing so this ashwatha tree karanam is above the branches are below and uh, these branches some branches are moving upwards some branches are moving downwards these are the different worlds of experience starting from swarga loka onwards to this loka to the atala vitala patala so these are the various branches of the tree and uh, the the sap that is running through this tree is the three gunas the three gunas sustain the tree and uh, the buds are the different uh, objects in the world the objects of experience they are the buds adascha moolani anusantatani now there are secondary roots again that uh, it it is spread throughout the tree the secondary roots they are said to be karma anubandini manushya loke they are the roots of karma that tie down a person to this human experience so you are tied down to this human experience you have come from above and you are locked up in this world because of ignorance when you realize that you are not really locked up it is only your ignorance that makes you believe that you are part of this creation you are not part of this creation creation is prakriti you are not creation you are the original reality you are purusha so as purusha you are once and for all free from creation even though you appear in this world which is limited appearance is not reality appearance of limitation is no limitation okay so the vedanta philosophy is limits do not limit this is the basic vedanta philosophy conditions do not condition i am not limited by conditions i am unconditional therefore conditions are just by the way joy and sorrow are by the way my nature is absolute free from joy and sorrow we'll see more of this in the next session sometimes what you know and what you feel may not be the same many people say that uh, i need to go on a diet it is healthy and uh, 
if i don't go on a diet i am going to become more and more unhealthy all this you know you may be a doctor also and you uh, tell your patients also the same thing but then you feel like eating and then you keep on gorging on on food and then you feel bad why because i know it is not good for me and still i am doing it okay this is called the dichotomy within the person there is a knower you and there is a doer you the knower you and the doer you if they are not integrated you find all the knowledge that you have does not work for you if the knower you and the doer you are integrated then you don't have to wait to act on your knowledge that knowledge is sufficient for you to connect to health knowledge of health is good enough to be healthy if you do the right thing at the right time this is called a habit when you have a pro uh or is it proactive habit you don't wait for disease in order to uh, take medicine you act before the disease comes you are into preventive mode okay that is a type of a uh, habit if you have developed in life you find vedanta makes you free right here right now if you are not created this habit of what you think what you uh, feel and what you do if there is a dichotomy then in spite of all vedanta you find it doesn't really help you the 13th chapter talked about different values of life amanitvam adambitvam ahimsa shanti rajavam when you practice these values what is happening is the knower you and the doer you are becoming one okay this is called integrity what you know the practice of honesty when you practice honesty what you know what you say what you do is one and the same okay when that happens you are building integrity when you break this habit of honesty what you know and what you do are different what you say what you know is different you are breaking your integrity when you break your integrity it is a great loss it is a great loss because whatever you know you cannot put it into action because difference okay so the practice of spiritual values ethical values it makes you integrated to the extent that whatever little knowledge that you have you are able to function with this optimally therefore even krishna says even a little bit of this knowledge even a little bit of this gita knowledge can save you from a great calamity so the practice of spirituality is basically to build yourself when you build yourself vedanta will bless you when you break the building when you break this integrity even god cannot help you so this is the message of the gita practice spirituality and enjoy the knowledge of absolute freedom spirituality is to be practiced knowledge is to be recognized knowledge of freedom is to be recognized you are absolutely free practice of spirituality is to make you ready for this knowledge when both are there you become a person who is totally fulfilled there is nothing more for you to do whatever you do whatever you experience is a bonus in life you have completed the journey of life if life continues it is just a bonus 
right? This is called absolute freedom. The truth is, you don't have to wait to become fulfilled. You are always already fulfilled. Every other fulfillment is relative. They are by the way. Your freedom, your absolute fulfillment is all the way. You are complete as you are. You are secure as you are. You are fulfilled as you are. No conditions apply. There is nothing to be done. There is nothing to be changed. There is something to be recognized. Recognize the fact you are complete. You are secure. You are fulfilled as you are, right here, right now, right here, right now. Om, Om Swastik Prajabhya Paripalayantam. Nyayena Margina Mahim Mahishaha Go Brahmane Bishwamasanityam Lokasmastaskino Bhavantu Kale Varshatu Parjanya Prithavisa Sashalini Desho Yam Shobarahita Brahmana Santunir Bhayaha Sarve Bhavantu Sukinaha Sarve Santunir Amayaha Sarve Badrani Pashantu Makasidukha Bhaktavet Asatoma Satkamaya Tamasoma Jyotir Gamaya, Mrityor Mamritam Gamaya, Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamadachate, Purnasya Purnamadaya, Purnameva Shishate, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti, Hari Om Shri Guru Pyonamaha, Hari Om. Om Namaskar. Okay, a few minutes for question answers. Acharya ji, sorry, okay. Acharya ji, in uh, uh, chapter two. Hmm. Sri Krishna and Arjuna, they talk of Stita Prajna, who, yeah, yeah. who is a knowledgeable person. Correct. And in chapter 15, uh, they are talking of Purusha Uttama, that is Supreme Person. Correct. I mean, if the translation is correct. Is there, is the quality is the same or are they referring to a different attribute? Uh, Purusha Uttama is what you are. Sita Prajna is uh, how you live. What is your understanding? Sita Prajna refers to your understanding. Okay. Uttama Purusha refers to what you are. So what you are is Uttama Purusha. Your understanding about yourself is Sita Prajna. Sita Prajna is knowledge. So knowing yourself. Understanding yourself. Thank you. So, yes. 